you need to be the best, that's it. You need to compete to be the best, that's it. You need to continue to be the best, that's it. With that, I started kindergarten at the age of two and a half. And after 22 years of formal education, I graduated with a PhD at the age of 24, which earned me the title, the youngest PhD holder by the Malaysian Book of Records. I may sound competitive because that's what they say. I came from a family where the definition of a good and filial child is when you study hard, you get all A in exam, get into a good university and work a well-paid job. I'm not only expected to compete, but to win in life. And I believe that this is not just happened to me. It's in our culture where competition starts young and even within family and among friends. Competition is defined as the activity of striving to gain or win something by defeating or establishing superiority over the others. In biology, competition within, between and among species for biological resources is one of the most important forces of evolution. And as a Malaysian, all of us are very familiar with the word kiasu. Kiasu originated from the Hokkien dialect, which means afraid to lose out, being competitive to the point of doing anything just to win. As a molecular biologist, I'm interested to understand the biology behind competitiveness. Research has shown that decision-making in a simple but competitive games are influenced by the dopamine regulating genes in a person's brain. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter, a chemical released by brain cells to signal other brain cells. In another word, it's the key part of the brain reward and pleasure-seeking system. Besides that, it helps to regulate learning and make us see and work towards a reward. In another word, you're more willing to do something when you know that there's actually a reward waiting for you. Therefore, the genes that govern dopamine functioning could possibly hold the key to understanding competitive behavior in human. And to look at things at the anatomical level, in competitive situations such as a batting game, two areas of the brain are mainly affected. Firstly, is the medial prefrontal cortex, which involves in memory and adaptive decision making. And secondly, the striatum, which deals with motivation and is crucial for learning to acquire rewards during social interaction. Functional magnetic resonance imaging or fMRI scans show that when people are playing these games, both areas show high intensity. Sorry. So how does being competitive actually helps in learning? When people compete against one another, they basically engage in two distinct types of learning processes. The first one is learning purely from the consequences of your own action. We call this as reinforcement learning. And secondly, it's a bit more sophisticated. We call this as belief learning, whereby people anticipate and respond strategically to the action of other players. So since we knew that being competitive is of human nature and competition can trigger the parts of brain that promotes learning, how can we actually exploit these to the human or student's learning benefit? The traditional way of teaching where all of us are so familiar of is when a teacher stands in front of a class, the student listen, and hopefully learning takes place during that duration. However, various pedagogical research have shown that this is actually the least effective method um, in learning. Especially for technical subjects in the science, technology, education and mathematics area or STEM, the traditional way of teaching has shown to decrease students' motivation and affect their degree choice after school. A report in 2017 by the Ministry of Education showed that at upper secondary school level, which covers Form 4 and Form 5, the number of students in art stream is 2.3 times higher compared to science stream. And when this actually moved on to Form 6, it was 6.7 times higher in arts compared to science stream. This is way far off 
from the 60 science to 40 arts ratio, which was proposed back in the 1970s. As our country is moving towards a developed nation, we cannot ignore the fact that it requires technical people to drive new technology. And therefore, there is a gap that we need to overcome to encourage more students to develop the passion and love for STEM areas. And the answers is by changing the way these subjects were being taught in school. As an educator, my aim is to enhance my students' understanding of my topic that I'm teaching in class, at the same time to develop their passion in science. In 2017, my team and I my team and I started working on our gamification project with the goal to test the potential of this learning approach in teaching genetics. So you might be wondering, for those of you who are not familiar with gamification, what is it all about? Gamification is a technique of incorporating game design elements into a non-game context. Education games are made up of detail rules and involve players to compete or collaborate with one another to achieve certain objective or outcome. In education, gamification has been proposed as a useful tool to achieve higher quality learning experience and peer engagement. Our board game focuses on introducing the fundamental concepts of how our genetic material, which is DNA, actually codes for protein. My students often find this topic difficult to understand due to its extensive terminologies and mechanisms. And since then, our board game has been used to replace the tutorial class for this uh, topic. And as a part of our larger gamification project, we also incorporated a mobile apps game and several other classroom games throughout the semester. In our mobile apps, students are placed in groups and able to compete with one another to complete tasks that resemble the activities in the famous Korean reality game show Running Man. We gave students limited time to complete the activities to create a competitive environment that foster learning. At the end of a semester, we did an analysis to look at students' experience and acceptance towards this learning approach. The final exam shows 30% increase overall compared to the previous semester, which were higher than what we have predicted. Our post surveys also shows that students from the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learning styles choose this sort of active learning approach compared to the traditional teaching style. Not only that, our, one of the most remarkable observations that we got is that when students are placed in group, they choose to help other players to complete the given task during the game. Students mentioned that by actually helping others to complete the task in the game, everyone, including themselves, actually learn something and understand the topic better. So what can we say? This approach has brought about teamwork and peer learning and shows that competition can actually help to foster learning. As what I mentioned just now, we all learn through experience, agree? If you look at this diagram here, it basically shows you the central dogma pathway of how our genetic material, which is DNA codes for protein. There are four nucleotides which made up the building blocks of DNA, and when placed in a group of three, there are a total of 64 different combinations. Each of these groups is known as a codon, and a codon codes for a single amino acid. And when placed in a group, a string of amino acid in, is then known as a protein. So using your scientific knowledge and your scientific skills, try to determine the name of this protein. We have rewards for you. Any answers?
Very good. Okay, so the answer is grumpy protein. So now let's try the second one. This time, you have 15 seconds to determine the name of the protein. The answers? Curious protein. So we have one last more to go. And this time, you have eight seconds to solve the name of the protein. Very good. The clumsy protein. So how do you feel now? Does competition make you alert and focus more on the topic? Does knowing that there's a reward that's waiting for you motivates you to work harder to solve the question? See, by changing the method that we use to teach, it is not difficult to learn molecular biology. And I hope that this helped to reset the way we think about learning science. It's not difficult at all. As a whole, gamification could be one way to go to change and improve the STEM education setting in Malaysia. Due to the competitive human nature, a bigger and bolder vision can be achieved through games. At the end of the day, competition is about motivation, passion, and pushing yourself forward. So what are we waiting for? Let's reset, rewind, and win together this time.